Welcome back guys, thanks for tuning in. This week we're going to see if we can get the generator going and see if we can get a little bit of movement in this keel. We are an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. Good morning everyone, we are doing some more wiggling of the keel this morning. Lee's just told me to go downstairs and do what again? Oh, you're going to wind. Okay, so he's up here. He's going to wind where the wire is. And we are going to tell him if there is any movement. Because he got a little bit more movement yesterday. The front was moving because he pulled the pin out. But he put the pin back in last night. Polished it all up, put it back in. And then once he put the pin back in, the actual back of the center board uh, moved. So that's good. But we'll see if we get some more movement right now. Okay, guy. Yeah, it's moving up. How far? Uh, we can go a little bit more and then it'll be on that steel pole. How much? Like an inch. Yeah, right. Okay. I did. Well, it won't come down. No, well, it's moving, but it's very tight. Did you try to wind it down? I had it down. I wound it up. It needs freeing up. Well, that just fall down on its own now. Do you have to wind it down? No, I've wound it out, but it's, it hasn't released down. Once you put the pin in last night, the back fell down. But now it's stuck again. Okay, so we've got some movement with the wire winding it. So when we're winding it, it's going up and it's coming down. So we'll just, uh, I'll show you. Wind it up. Good news. It's working up now. There must just be a real little bit of growth up in there. All right, guys, so we know we've got movement now in the um, center board. That was the main thing I was after. It hasn't been moved in many years, but we've got movement. So that's a start. It is a little tight. I don't know if it's growth or whether the cable's stuck up there, but that's fine. So when we go to go back into the water, there'll be a day where we go back in the sling and we'll raise the boat and I'll slide the dagger board out. I know I can remove the pin that I loosened up. So I can pull the pin out. We can lift the boat and leave board or the center board, I should say, on the ground. We'll re-antifoul the center board. We'll clean up in the cavity here. We'll inspect the cable. We'll inspect the outlet and see why it's tight. So whether it's growth, cable or something, but we'll know come the time. Okay, now we're gonna move on to other jobs, get back to the generator. Okay guys, we're back on. So I emailed Italy, NS Cement that makes the transformer for the Pagario generators. Over here on the motherboard, these were missing all these little clips. There's only like four wires in them anyway. But if you come back over to my manual, they were a different configuration completely. So I emailed them and they sent me through a labeled photo of how I should wire it. So I've done that. Obviously the other harness was missing too and I figured out which wires go where hopefully. And I've put them on to here and I'll clip them onto the generator where the generator was just snipped. This is just a real rough job just to see if everything's working. If it is, I'm gonna make a nice neat job of this or buy a proper wiring harness if it's cost effective or I can find one. Or I'll just get some tinned wire and make my own harness. We're back in action. I've just joined up all these wires. Nothing, none of these wires were with the generator. So I've had to sort of work out from here and talking to Italy of where which wire goes where. And I think I'm just about ready. We're gonna bench test the motor, so pretty much I don't wanna install this thing and find it doesn't work. So I've got it downstairs, I'm gonna hook a hose up to the water. I'm missing one sensor, I think, an exhaust sensor, which is fine. I'm gonna empty some oil out of it because it's overfilled with oil. First things first, we're gonna go downstairs, wire this up, put our multimeter on there and see if we've got 
230 volts once we get started. I'm taking over another habit there. Yep, it's called terminal terminal durries, you know. Join the wrong wire and they light up. Don't judge me on the wiring. I didn't want to do it in half, so I thought I'd just wire it all up as it would be in the boat. I've just made my own harnesses all out of incorrect coloured wire, incorrect size wire. Overkill, of course. I've got no plugs, no sockets. I've just sort of made it all up as per spec. Just going to check everything over, triple check it all. I haven't even looked at the engine side of it. I've got to obviously dump some oil out. If the oil level's up to here, it should be down there. Pretty much there's no impeller in here, so I'm just going to hook it straight to the hose. That'll be my cooling. I've got a pipe here, which is the fuel. I'll stick in a bucket of diesel. Obviously when it goes in the boat, it'll be straight to a cav filter or to a Raycor filter, sorry. And uh, this will go into our sea chest. that will have a valve on it. That will be our water intake. And our exhaust is over here where you can't see and that will be plumbed up to an original exhaust outlet that was on the boat because it did at one stage have a generator. Fingers crossed and toes that uh, once we do kick this over, we get power. Once we get power, this is going to put it from three phase into here which will give us our 230 volt which is European. So it's not what the boat is. The boat is 110 volt. But, so I'm going to come out of here and we'll have 230 volt and if we do run a dive compressor or any heavy equipment that needs a good amount of power we'll run it through a plug here which will be 230 volt and then it'll go through to a transformer which then just goes to our boat and runs it all as 110 so it steps it down from 230 to 110 so start the generator up it'll just be running 110 through the inverter to the boat but then we'll also have the option if we do need anything on 230 240 volt if you run a welder for instance they need a little extra power or if you run a dive compressor they run a lot better on the 230 it's just options we don't even have to use it if we don't want to but it'll be there because we obviously we've got 230 so we'll put an outlet in between the transformer and this one all right i'm gonna put my head back into this because i'm gonna triple check everything because there was no wires together and all, you, all i had to start with I did have one bit of a harness, the remains of a harness, which were just left like that. So all these wires, I've had to ride on them because I haven't got all the proper coloured wires. I've just run black, but I've labelled them the colour they are. And I've wired them all up to wherever they go. Fingers crossed I've done it right, done this go bang. But uh, yeah, that's all I was left with. So uh, if it had been removed with a bit of care, we just would have plugged this in and we would have known weeks ago if this thing worked. But you also wouldn't have got it for a carton of beer, so. No, so the story behind this generator is there was a catamaran sitting actually where I'm sitting. They wanted to get moving. They were having trouble with this generator. Several people had looked at it and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. So I put my hand up, as you know, something broken I'll have a go at fixing it hopefully it pays off so they put this out and I took them to dinner and gave them a carton of beer and that was the uh, price for this generator because I think new they're about fourteen thousand dollars and this has got a thousand hours on it which is absolutely nothing so we were going to get a Honda generator a little 2 kVA but we thought no this gives us an option to run a dive compressor later down the track they put a new generator in their boat that way sailing at the moment three days later and their generator, their brand new one, isn't working. There was a problem with their fuel line. So there was actually no problem with this generator. It was a collapsed fuel line feeding this generator, which was causing a problem that no one could see. And it was just a fuel issue and it would work and it wouldn't work. It was intermittent. So obviously the fuel line would be open at some stages, the generator worked, then be closed and it wouldn't work. They only found that out when they got the new generator. If that theory is right, there should be nothing wrong with this in about an hour. It should be running. That's how we ended up in the back of a boatyard with a big bird's nest of wires. So I'm nearly there. I've only got a couple more wires to figure out and then I to, um, I've actually nearly got all the wires figured out, which is pretty cool. So, because these are all start relays and whatnot, so that, so that you can just start it off there. I just wanted to make sure everything was just, once I unplug this, I can install it in the boat, obviously with a, new wiring loom if I make it or we may be able to buy a proper wiring harness for it and that'll make life even easier. I won't have to make it all up again.
So Lee's been down at getting the generator, trying to get the generator running, and he just called me down. Let's go see how he's going. Moment of truth. I've just been going over my drawings. Um, I know it looks really messy, but it's because I've made all the wiring loom. Fingers crossed it's all in the right spot. Plug in now and just let me know if that doesn't want to blow up. What? Okay, power's going on. We've got power. It's got stuff on the screen. All right, that's a start. I'll just tighten up our power. Okay, well, that's a start. The display's working. Working. All right, I've just put some fuel in a drum here. Pump up our fuel. These are self-bleeding, so fuel, water, and power. We've got the power, fuel. I've rigged up a tap, a hose tap. There's no impeller in here. This will suck normally from the sea intake. But now it's got no impeller in there, so the water will just flow through and keep it cool. Got the inverter box open so I can see what's going on and it'll make testing easier. These are our three that come out of the generator here, so three phase, and then it'll convert it all down to here, which should be, well that should be like 220 to 240 somewhere, 230 volt, that in a second when I start it. And then we're gonna check up here. Um, that's the generator coming in, so I don't know what they should be, but as long as they're all the same, we should be right. So yeah, I'm just gonna test that, test that, make sure nothing starts smoking or arcing or funking out. So we're going to put the water on. Oh, we're going to put the water on and then we're going to start it. Whoa, moment of truth. Got a little exhaust pipe there, which is probably going to be really loud. All right, water's coming out. Not a lot of water. Good enough to keep it cool. So water, fuel, battery. Okay, so you got to hold down for 10 seconds, apparently. Zero load at the moment, zero amps. generator side of things. We've got power coming out of the converter which converts three phase to 230. So now all we got to do is put a load on there. I don't know how because we're in, well we're in Mexico but most boats here are US and they're probably mostly 110. So I've got to try and find something that's 240 volts that I can put on there and load test. Something substantial because this is 9 kVA generator so you could really load that up just to give you an idea your little portable hondas they're 2 or 2200 so 2 kVA this is 9 so it's a lot bigger so i got to try and find something put some good load on it uh, i'll try and think of how we can do this i don't have any plugs and i don't have anything so i'm gonna have to um i could maybe hardwire something if i could find something 240. honey yeah. you're so smart we've got to order we're gonna get new engine mounts get little bits and pieces for it I didn't want to put anything, any money into this just to make sure it was working and we're halfway there I'll say because until we load test it we're not going to know its full capabilities and if it goes funky under load or if it can handle load. So yeah, stage one, success. You are an incredible person babe. Once more for good luck. I think Brian would be super proud of you babe. The day. Hang on, I gotta fix up the microphone. Lee is still at the generator. He's been working on this generator for days on end and he's got it going and he's got, got somewhere but it's still not right. Quick little briefing here. I changed the oil out um, yesterday. The oil level was on the full mark, exactly on the full mark. Now I run the generator for an hour and it has grown to like double the amount. So, without confusing you, Nick said to me um, that this generator started leaking oil before they just gave up on it. Now, I've degreased and there's no oil leaks anywhere, but the, 
the diesel's mixing in with the oil. It could have even been blown out of the dipstick or whatever when it was leaking. Long story short, I've checked the fuel pump. So usually there's a diaphragm in there and that happened on Catalpa 1 where the diesel started leaking through the diaphragm, it goes in the engine and your engine oil level rises. In this case, I've already checked this. Uh, it's, it's not water in the oil. Um, the engine runs sweet as, but Nick did give me an injector. So someone has replaced an injector. This engine's only just got like a thousand hours on it, and I'm pretty sure these last a lot longer. So I'm just gonna have a quick look here. It'll take me two seconds. I've just got a feeling with thing with work that gets done when you're cruising. Sometimes you don't have the option to use proper mechanics and therefore sometimes things just aren't put together the right way. The knowledge isn't there to work on your specific engine. I was just thinking only just because there's a replacement part which to me shouldn't be replaced, not that young. The hours, but I'm just looking at these O-rings here and that and I just want to have a look and make sure they've put that back on together and I'll just see what it looks like. If I can't see anything, well, I'm gonna take the injectors into town when we go back to Phoenix to a injector specialist. Otherwise, I don't know, I'm stumped, guys. But first things first, I like to just eliminate all the, the simple, simple things that could be wrong. Okay, there's our two injectors. I can see that's diesel over the top there. That. That's not too bad. Hang on. That's loose. Hold on a second. There's wiggle under there and I can see diesel. Look at that. There's either... Well, that's just loose, I think. Hold on. That's not even done up. That's loose. That's loose. That's tight. Oh, that one's loose. Oh, look at the diesel coming out as I tighten that. Wow. So, like I suspected, I just thought, it's a, like a thousand hours, there's not much on an engine. This hasn't been assembled properly. This is the injection line for the fuel. So, fuel comes in, fuel goes out, there's nothing fancy, and there'll be like little O-rings underneath here. So. I just don't know, did they put O-rings in, did they not, did it, was it just as simple they didn't tighten that up and they put it back together? These are the simple little things that can cause massive problems and really hard to troubleshoot something like that. But that is a real, I'm pretty much, I can pretty much say that's the problem. Yeah, I can see the diesel all around it. So to me, that's a bloody win. Um, that's really good. I'm, I'm gonna get my torque wrench out because I know that they've played with these or one's been replaced I don't know which one, but um, I'm just gonna make sure the torque settings are all right I'm gonna undo these. I'll check that there's o-rings in there like things like this when they get pulled apart and put back together You just don't know what people have done. I'm 99.999% That that's the problem. I can see it as I push on that. That's um, that's a win. I know it's a problem guys, but I'm down to my last problem with this before I think we've got a 9 kVA generator on Catalpa 2. I'm stoked. When you can't find them, it's really frustrating. Yes. Stoked about that. I spent days on this thing trying to troubleshoot that. <laughs> okay, so I've reassembled the engine. I've put the rocker cover with the gasket back on here. I've tightened up our four bolts that were the culprit for our diesel leaking. We've now test run it again, and it is running perfect. And now the oil level, I won't touch it, I've got dirty hands, but it's perfectly on the full mark. No diesel in there. So that was a win. She's ready to be installed. Just before we install it, like I said, new engine mount, some insulation for our box, and we'll lift it up and mount it in the, uh, engine bay and it'll be ready for installation, wire harnesses, hooking up the exhaust system, you know, all that jaga. So she should be a bloody ripper when she's going in there. Now, we might need to get a dive compressor and we'll be back in action. Do some diving in the Sea of Cortez on our way out of here. 
That'd be awesome. Taking someone to dinner and getting them a carton of beer, I think it's well worth a uh, 9 kVA generator with a thousand hours on it. So they didn't want to waste their time, so they just bought a new one. Yeah, thanks again, Nick and Jasmine. Yeah, thanks guys. We uh, persevered and we got it going. But proof will be in the pudding after a week or so of running. And I'm feeling pretty confident. Thanks for watching that long drawn out episode on bloody talk about generators. Trust me, I'm worn out and had enough of them too. See you next time. Stay tuned. Like, subscribe, you know what to do. Cheers.